What's going down everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Holmes Hobbies Motor Control. It's your boy Josh aka Coleman and I'm gonna be off screen once again today you know sitting off to the side basically uh, just because I wanted to have some room to kind of flip this guy around and show you guys some things. Um, I want to talk about something real simple today and that is gonna be why you need to take gear ratios into account when selecting your motors in uh, ESCs, things like that. Not so much the ESCs, but definitely the motors, right? Um, a lot of people don't really take that into account. Everyone wants to know what's the best motor or what's the best um, ESC, or I'm just getting, you know, if I run uh, Rock 412, Mamba Monster, whatever, whatever, then I'm going to be a beast no matter what. And that's just not the case. Um, really, what you guys got to do is just stop <laughs> just stop reading or asking everybody on Facebook what to do and um, just start doing the research. I mean, I'm not even saying you should ask me what to do. I'm saying you guys should literally just um, slowly roll a little bit, you know, take your time, breathe, and figure out why you want it to do what you need it to do. Like we talked about, and I think it was in the last episode, you know, it, it boils down to your expectations versus uh, the weight of the truck, the gear ratios, blah, 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 blah. All that stuff comes into accountability. And we're not going to go into that in this one again, but what we are going to talk about is this truck as an example. We're going to use this, and um, we're going to talk about this truck's gear ratios, right? We're going to talk about its setup and why I prefer this setup over just about everything out there. Okay, it's um, it's different than what a lot of people run, but it's simple. Okay, and this is gonna kind of lead us into another episode I'm gonna do probably tomorrow or maybe later this week about uh, doing true budget builds. Okay, and we're gonna use this as an example in that as well. But for now, what we're gonna talk about is the setup I run in this and why I choose to run it so low geared. A lot of you guys have seen this at events, seen it on videos, um, seen me on the trail with it playing, and uh, you've seen you know, how it behaves and moves and all that stuff, and the first thing everyone always notices is, holy friggin' cow, man, that thing is geared low, 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 low. Well, it's really simple. Um, I've got standard setup, all right? This is an Axial SCX-10. It runs an Axial SCX-10 transmission, Axial SCX-10 uh, axle housings. Here, you know what? I'll just put it up here. I gotta move my coffee so I don't get dirt in it. I'll put it up here so you guys can see everything. Look, it's all old, beat up, still got dirt and everything on it. Sorry, I just shook that. It's just heavy. Um, so you see the stock axle housings, right? Stock skid plate, stock chassis rails, all that stuff. I got aftermarket homemade cheap links there, my ghetto links as I call them. Um, it's just a real simple truck, right? And the transmission, if you look, looks a little funky. Well, it is an Axial SEX-10 transmission with an HPI gear reduction bolted up to it, okay? Well, a lot of people uh, know that already, I've talked about it, but I've never gone much further into it, you know, what those ratios are, how to, uh, why I go for those ratios. <clears throat> and how to get different ratios and things like that. A lot of people just stick with the stock setup and they'll change their pinion, they'll change their spur gear, maybe they'll change their differential gears, and that's as far as their ratios go. And then, you know, there's tire size to take into accountability for rollout and things like that, but we're not going to get that deep. Um, so what, what I want to talk about basically is this, all right? I prefer a low-speed vehicle for my own preference. You may not prefer that, so if you do not agree with what I say here as far as what you should do or shouldn't do, trust me, it's okay. You're not going to upset me. If you come by me at an event whoop, doing a wheelie, I'm not going to be mad, bro. I'm going to be glad I saw you there. Don't worry. I'm not hating on anybody that does RC different than I do RC. It's for everybody, all right? And we've all got different preferences. So just keep in mind that this is my preference and I'm not trying to put it on anybody out there. I'm just explaining to you guys why it's my preference and how Holmes Hobbies comes into play with this, okay? Um, for me personally, everyone knows why uh, I choose Holmes Hobbies. Now, I've talked about it a bunch of times in the past and you guys, for the most part, know what I prefer to run. I have a wide variety of Holmes Hobbies products and I, want, I run a wide variety of uh, builds, you know, in different weights and speed ratios, gear ratios, or whatever, all that stuff, so I kind of try to cover the map so I can kind of get a feel of everything, right? But my personal preference is this. 
This is my favorite truck of all time, or Jeep, I should say. It is my favorite build ever, bar none. Is it my most realistic? No. Is it my most scale? No. Is it the uh, most powerful? No. Is it the um, heaviest? No, right? It is just a combination that works for me, and I love it. If I had to choose one truck to save out of all of my vehicles, this is going to be the one that I save right? It just is. Uh, a lot of you might think I am bananas for that, given I've got triple six and Hercules and Blue Dream. You know, I've got, uh, I've you know, a bunch. I've got the Grape Ape. I got a whole, <laughs> whole fleet of these things now, right? But out of all of them, this is king shit right here. This is my big dog. I love it. And no, it's not even the most expensive. It is actually one of the cheapest now. Um, so basically, this has a Holmes Hobbies BLE Pro, my all-time favorite ESC, I gotta say. Uh, it runs brush, brushless. You know, I, I probably said this several times. I probably even said the BRXL is my favorite ESC. I guess it just depends on the layout. But uh, given it's in my favorite truck, this get get up right here just works for me. This is what's in it, so I'm gonna say this is probably my favorite layout. You know, one of my favorite layouts. Um, you can accomplish the same speed and ratio with different motors and things, and we'll get into that. But uh, so the ESC though is by far one of my favorites and that's the BLE Pro. If you guys are not familiar with that now you should definitely look into it. It's a phenomenal setup. Um, I can run up to 6S. It's waterproof. It's just, it's a kill all man. It just gets the job done. So you guys know how I feel about the BLE Pro. Obviously it's highly recommended for me. Now aside from the BLE Pro, when it comes to the motor, I'm running a 3500 KV motor in here. The Polar Pro 540 3500 KV motor. Let me put that up there for you guys. Uh, I've showed this off in other episodes. That's the motor I'm running in this beast here. It is normally for something like a rock racer. It's a high speed motor. But because I'm running extremely low gearing in this beast, I am running a high KV motor. Now you can run a uh, low geared drivetrain with a high KV motor or a high turn motor. So you'll spin your motor fast. Um, but your gears are going to spin nice and slow, thus spinning your wheels and tires super slow, thus giving you a phenomenal amount of wheel control, but very limited amount of wheel speed. Okay. Now, wheel speed is a relative term because your idea of wheel speed versus my idea of wheel speed may be two different things. I want a realistic amount of performance. And when I say realistic, I mean when you guys watch uh, people's videos, um, and they're slowed down, even some of my videos, right, of like the Yeti, things like that, and they're nice and slow, and you see the suspension moving, raw, nice and slow, and it's hopping around, and all that, right, and it just looks so cool to watch, right, um, that is the type of movement I want in real life without slow motion, right, I want it to move and behave the way it would as if it was in slow motion, so, Therefore, what I do is I gear everything down a lot, and then I run a higher KV motor. That limits my drive time. So instead of running four hours now off of an 8,000 like I used to, I only run maybe three hours, right? Two and a half, three hours, right? Because my motor's spinning that much faster in order to run, you know, like barely even walking speed, right? Just so what I'm doing is I'm wasting a lot of energy if I'm just on flat ground going for wheel speed. So it's pointless. If you're Recon G6ing, this may not be your favorite setup. Those of you that have seen me at a Recon G6ing, I'm always the last one to finish because I'm the slowest guy there, right? So instead of uh, doing that, what you might want to do is run a regular, you know, gear ratio and then run maybe a lower KV motor. So you'll get a little bit more control right? But you'll still be able to have a lot of wheel speed. Like you could run a revolver instead and now you're going to have a phenomenal amount of wheel speed, or I mean a phenomenal amount of wheel control, but still have some good wheel speed if you gear it properly, right? You'll still be able to go walking speed faster than walking speed on some of them. You can gear it up higher because you got a lot of torque coming out of that motor, right? So that's why when I talk about, you know, what you expect coming into play, you got to expect, um, a certain type of performance out of your vehicle when you're building it. Do you want it to be uh, fast, you know, and, and something so you can keep up with the pack? Or do you want to go slow and stay in a small area and really work that area, you know? Me personally, I prefer to stay in a little area and work that area and really watch my vehicle move like the ones on the videos that are in slow motion. So by doing that, I've chose to gear it down. So let's talk about how I geared it down. 
Uh, that's important so you guys know why I can run such a high KV motor like the Polar Pro 3500 and still um, have one of the slowest trucks on the trail, okay, which gives me crazy amount of wheel control. Um, it gives me more pull through my throttle, you know, and it's just, you, once you do it, you'll see what I'm talking about. So uh, I have my ratios pulled up off screen here. I'm just going to kind of walk through them with you guys. And my battery's also dying on my camera. Go figure. I forgot to charge it. So I'll have to kind of speed it up. But the yellow Jeep's gear ratios go like this. You have a spur and pinion ratio, right? Because you have a spin or a spur and a pinion. My spur and pinion are way different than yours. I promise you, yours are gonna be, you're going to be geared a lot lower than mine when it comes to this. I'm running a 32-pitch uh, uh, gearing, right? So I'm running a 54-tooth spur gear, and I'm running a 24-tooth pinion. That's a huge pinion and a tiny spur. Most guys have a huge spur and a tiny pinion. There's a reason why I went opposite. That ratio gives me a 2.35 to 1 out of those, right? Transmission, stock axial transmission ratio, it's a 2.6 to 1 ratio, Okay. That's what all your guys' is unless you change your gearing around somehow, right? So then uh, you have your differential gears, which is in your axles, right? Mine, I geared it down, okay? So I went with a 43-tooth ring gear, and I went for a 13-tooth pinion gear. That gives me a 3.31 to 1. Ooh, excuse me, I had a burp there. But that gives me a 3.31 to 1 uh, ratio in my axles, right? Now my HPI gear reduction unit is a 7.56 to 1 gear reduction unit, right? And I run that directly off of my spur and pinion. So, if I did my math correctly, and you guys can tell me if I didn't, I'm sure you, there's about 80% of you guys are better at math than I am, because I didn't even finish high school. But, <laughs> 150, hey, hey, and for all you kids watching, I got a GED, okay? Finish high school, man, I wish I would have. Don't, that's not an excuse not to finish high school, just because I'm here. Alright, finish high school. Alright, sorry you guys, off track there, I don't want to give the wrong message. So 152.89 to 1 is my final drive gear ratio, alright? Now, and if I'm wrong, that's even more proof why you guys should finish high school, because I, I'm not that good at math. But my understanding from ratios and all that stuff is that basically I'm going to have to multiply all those ratios wherever I have a ratio like that, uh, a reduction or whatever, right, a stacking of gears, so my spur pinion, my HPI gear reduction unit, my transmission, my differential gears, right? And then uh, multiply all those together, I get a final drive gear ratio. And then if I want a final rollout, I can take into account my tire diameter, the outside diameter, and get a file, final rollout as well. I didn't do that on this, but I did get my final drive gear ratio, which is 152.89 to 1. Um, compare that to the stock, like... I don't remember what the factory is. It was like 60 to 1 or something. It's on the Axial's website, so I'm sure you guys can check it out there. Uh, I'm clicking on it here to figure it out. but and I don't remember what it is. Final drive. Yeah, Axial's final drive ratio is, I think, like a 50.77 to 1 or something. I could be wrong. I, it could be like a 60 to 1, something like that. But I, I'm pretty sure it's like a 50.77. 7 to 1 or something like that, which is, as you can see, literally like a third of what mine is, or reverse, whatever that is. So, basically, my gearing is way, way, way lower than a stock axial SCX-10. So, if you were to put a 3500 kV motor into a truck that has a 50.77 to 1 ratio, you're going to be doing wheelies, it's going to be extremely fast, and you're not going to have very good low speed control, all right? Not going to have very good wheel control, right? You're not going to be able to control each lug coming off of the rock, right? Well, with this, I can run that high, you know, KV motor and still have that reduction, which is going to give me a tremendous amount of torque, right? I mean, a serious amount of torque. It's going to still give me a little bit of wheel speed if I up my battery, right? So I run a higher voltage, like a 3S or a 4S battery. Then I've got a lot more, you know, wheel speed coming through those gears. Uh, then, um, basically, I can carry a heavier truck around. So this truck, everyone that's ever picked it up knows, it's extremely heavy. I mean, it's somewhere around 14 to 15 pounds. It is a very, very heavy truck. Um, one of my heaviest. I think Hercules has it by maybe a pound or two. And 
uh, it still rock crawls better than almost anything I have here, and that's what I built it for. It's it's like an old retired TTC truck. It's 1.9s, big Super Swamper XLs, um, lots of cage work, you know, to protect the body that's already raisined up and beat up, um, rust and all that. So it's supposed to get muddy, dirty. I rarely wash it. You know, my idea of washing this is maybe just spraying it off with the hose a little bit. It gets no service, no maintenance at all until something breaks, usually, which turns out to be a bearing nine times out of ten and so this truck is extremely reliable for me it's extremely good with performance for what it's built to do which is to rock crawl and uh, scale trail in a realistic manner um, you know it, it does some mud bog and things like that TTC type things too um, but I found it's best in the rocks and it just it's phenomenal for that type of stuff, and it's very easy to build something like this, you guys. So, basically, I just wanted to touch on those gear ratios versus KV versus turn, things like that. And basically, if you have a high KV or a low turn motor, then you can run a lower gear ratio to get that torque out of them, right? Without having to go buy a whole new setup. If you're running a uh, low KV or a high turn motor, right, where you don't have a lot of speed already you can gear it up the opposite of what I did right and get more wheel speed out of it so you're not always stuck with the performance you have just because you're stuck with the motor and ESC that you have you can mix it up right you can add some thought to it and really come up with something better and to show you guys that have never seen this in person uh, what I'm talking about as far as low wheel speed and stuff like that low speed control whatever um, here we go. Now you hear it? That's actually all that racket you're hearing is an old fan I have in there. Eventually it'll stop doing that. Maybe if I touch it a couple times. It's made and making that noise for the last two years almost now. See, it just went quiet. And, uh, basically... This thing has enough power to where even if the gears are old and crunching, if it's got stuff binding up, you know, it doesn't have good rolling, or it has a lot of rolling resistance, it doesn't have a, a, a real smooth um, free roll to it, it doesn't really matter with this thing. It gets dirt and stuff packed into it, the transmission will fill up with junk to where the gears barely grab, and the only thing I'll have to do is once a year maybe I'll take it apart and kind of blow stuff out, clean stuff out, maybe throw a couple new bearings in it. This has stock dog, well, you know, we're going to go into all that in another video. The point with this video is that you need to select your KV or turn motor based off of your gear ratios. And if you don't know gear ratios, just do a little Googling. That's all I did, School of Google, and it'll teach you how to do that, right? And if I'm wrong, you guys, don't, don't hesitate to just call me out in the comments. I'm not going to get offended. It's fine. We all mess up in our math. If I'm right in my math, well, then there's your good example. Um, John Holmes is extremely good with his math. He have gear ratios popped off the top of his head like that, and I'm sure you'll see him in the comments throughout the Holmes Hobby series correcting me when I say something wrong. So uh, you guys just Take the time to learn your ratios and learn the expectations you have for your vehicle versus what you need to do to the vehicle to make them a reality. So anyways, you guys, that's all I got for today. Much love. And uh, I guess I'm going to see you out on the trails. I think now that I got this plugged in, I'm going to take it out and do a little bit of wheeling. I got some new toys and stuff I want to uh, put to use. So you guys be sure to stay tuned. Maybe you'll see that in some other videos here. Uh, probably... I don't know. Actually, I'll probably drop another video tomorrow. Anyways, you guys, you know what it is. Peace and chicken grease. I'll see you on the flip side. Yeah.